So I might not talk about PlayStation stuff all that much on this channel, but I do enjoy PlayStation, especially classic PlayStation stuff. It's just the PlayStation 5 thus far hasn't really been a system for me. I haven't played it since Ratchet and Clank came out. Really enjoyed that game, but I've just been waiting for those big first party exclusives because that's why I buy PlayStation systems. I play my third party stuff over on the Xbox because I mean, without that, there's not a whole heck of a lot to play on there. But with the PlayStation systems, I always look for the first party exclusives. Exclusive. So Horizon Forbidden West was definitely a game I've really been looking forward to. Now, of course, I'm not a cool kid. I didn't get an early copy of this game to review or anything like that. So I thought, hey, why don't we take a look at some of the reviews because the review embargo went up today and see what this game is all about because there's some really high scores, some sort of in the middle scores, and actually a few really low scores. So I want to look at this game, see what it's all about according to reviewers, and just come to some conclusions. So if this is your first time on the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button, like, and share the video but without any further ado let's jump into these review scores alrighty so over on Metacritic we're looking at the PlayStation 5 version of the game because I, I don't care about the PlayStation 4 version of the game and we can see it sitting at an 89 based on 95 critic reviews so I mean that's obviously a very high score but I was kind of expecting you know low 90s but you know it doesn't really matter it's just a bunch of different people's opinions on things and obviously there's going to be some people that love it and maybe some people that don't really love it so we got a lot of tens here or 100s you know great games we're going to look at some of these and then we have of course sort of your middle of the road your, your 80s or lower you know obviously though most of these are nines and up though which i'm not super surprised by like obviously it's going to be a really good game but these are the ones i'm actually very interested in the sort of bottom ones like a six a six out of ten that, that's a little bit questionable here so we're going to start things off with one of the higher review scores giving it a 10 out of 10. all right so here is a five out of five so a perfect score all right, so here is a five out of five score. This is coming to us from Video Games Chronicle. I like them, so I figured this would be the one as far as the high scores that I would look at. Her review, Horizon Forbidden West is a stunning sequel. Gorilla's PlayStation 5 debut improves upon its predecessor in every way. So you can see here, you know, when it comes to sequels that are significantly better than the original, a game that often comes to mind is Assassin's Creed 2 really see i don't like that it's street fighter 2 look at street fighter 1 and then look at street fighter 2 like that's the game that really improved upon it but i think everyone was expecting this game to improve upon the predecessor i mean look at like sonic 1 to sonic 2 of course here we got some screenshots of the game the game obviously looks absolutely gorgeous the real thing that i was very interested in with this game though was the melee combat because that was the one thing I wasn't in love with with the first game was the melee combat. There are multiple times that we came across a machine from the first game full of competence of late game Zero Dawn Aloy and thinking we'd easily rip it apart only for us to send it back to the nearest campfire. So obviously, uh, okay, here we go. The combat doesn't feel entirely complete. Melee combat, while improved, still feels inferior to the excellent bow-based encounters that dominate the rest of the game. While Aloy's staff is much more well integrated into her arsenal of new combos with the bow, make combat much more free-flowing. The encounters can slow down if you find yourself exclusively using melee, though this is thankfully rare. That's fine. I didn't really expect it to sort of shift how the whole gameplay was. You know as far as how you would actually play the game i just wanted improvements on the melee combat so to hear that that has been done that's a very good thing horizon forbidden west offers two graphics modes favoring performance and resolution the performance option is a solid 60 frames per second with some reduced visual effects while the resolution mode offers 4k at 30 frames per second i think that's kind of interesting i'm not trying to get into a whole power war thing but i thought the whole point of these new consoles was for like 4k 60 on all your games but you know that's definitely been few and far between with all of these games but that's i'm not a i'm not a pixel counter you guys know i'm not i'm not super into p or anything like that so not a huge deal for me but i feel like you know that was kind of what these whole systems were supposed to be about even after you finish a game if you've elected to explore if you're not elected to explore you'll have a huge amount of map to yet uncover especially in the coastal region so that's cool some end game stuff here so let's see uh incredible open world best in class bow combat gripping story ashley birch shines some open world clutter and it did get a five out of five so very cool stuff here you know i'm not super surprised by this game getting really high scores but i want to take a look at one that was a little bit lower and then take a look at one that was just i guess bottom of the barrel 
All right, so this review is from GameSpot. Obviously, they've been around for a very long time. I'll probably call them GameStop at least once when I'm talking about this. Wow, they they put a lot of words here, and they didn't put a lot of a lot of like blurbs to use. Like I like that about Video Games Chronicle. You know, they gave me some blurbs to use. I can just read those. Like, okay, so we're just gonna go down to the summary here. Eight out of ten. The good quests are often populated by interesting characters who provide relatable stakes. Many map filling activities are well designed and diverse once you're equipped and well upgraded well equipped well and upgraded combat provides lots of tactical options can get intense absolutely gorgeous on the ps5 tons of great facial animations too much to keep track of stealth is much more rewarding than combat which forces you to scramble and can get frustrating so minor technical issues like texture pop-up or stuck animations aloy isn't nearly as interesting as everyone around her that's kind of interesting but i mean that's okay like if, if, if Aloy isn't the most interesting character in the game, it's not like she's the only character in the game. She's she's seeing other characters and obviously interacting with them. That was from the first game. The technical issues. I'm, I'm curious to see that. You know, this looks like they've just sort of lumped the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 5 version of the game together, which I don't think that. I mean, they say PlayStation 5, but why would you specify that it looks gorgeous? on the playstation 5 i mean obviously this game I mean, look at this like this looks this looks freaking crazy why are you talking about forspoken i've heard i've heard some rough things about that game but yeah you know that that's kind of weird you know the the minor quips it doesn't seem like that's really you know worth two points off of the score for me you know these seem like just sort of uh preferences or whatnot but that's fine you know whatever i'm not here to bash anyone's review or anything like that everyone's allowed to have their own opinions i'm not trying to you know create a hive mind to where people are attacking this person because they didn't like the game or whatever that's not what this is about but if you're putting your review out there for people it's obviously going to be subject to scrutiny look at my crash team racing review so gamestop or yeah see i did it i did it game spot eight out of ten but now i want to look at, at the low this is the lowest review that the game has gotten and i want to see why they didn't like this game all right, so here is the lowest review score that's currently available. This is coming to us from Gamer.no. I've never heard of them, but it's obviously a foreign website. I had to translate this, so the English might be a little bit broken, but I do think it's ironic that the ad that's running on their website is for Horizon Forbidden West, and you know, it doesn't seem they seem to like it that much. Horizon Forbidden West is nowhere near living up to expectations. I mean, I, it, it depends what your expectations were, you know, like what were you expecting from this game? When, when it comes to a sequel, I'm just expecting more and better. You know, I'm not expecting something like Street Fighter 2 where it completely changes everything, but you know, I don't know. Let's see if they do a review here because obviously this English is going to be, you know, not the greatest to, to read and translate. All right, we'll go to the conclusion here. So six out of 10. Wow, man. Not close to living up to Horizon Zero Dawn. I find that hard to believe. Horizon Forbidden West always struggled to fill the shoes of its predecessor. Did it though? Game development during a pandemic has been proven to be extremely difficult. And after trawling through Gorilla's attempts, I'm convinced that the home office and time pressure have at least gotten in the way here. There are too many strange design choices compared to Horizon Zero Dawn for me to conclude otherwise. The ridiculous amount of weapons is incomprehensible and the free climbing is simply miserably done. Now that's very interesting because I thought the free climbing stuff looked really cool in all the trailers that we saw for this game so i I'm, I'm i'm curious to see how it's implemented if it's done in just you know a, a poor manner amount of weapons though i mean that, that's cool like you got a bunch of weapons incredibly gorilla has taken the weakness of horizon zero dawn and highlighted each and every one of them everything you willingly willingly ignored because the overall impression was so powerful is highlighted in the light and you're left with one moment of frustration after another with that said, there are things to enjoy for hardcore Horizon fans. At its best, the combat system is great, although the weakness light up the game's most difficult duels. Several of the predecessor's characters also make a solid comeback, and some of the new ones that come help to make the story exciting before they suddenly disappear again. I myself wandered through the desert, jungle, and snowy landscape in search of the Zero Dawn magic that somehow had disappeared, but I never found it. That's interesting. You know, I don't think he's being unfair, but I feel like maybe this individual and i'm i'm assuming it's a uh, he she they i'm not i'm not sure who they, who wrote this i i'm i'm apologize for the people who uh okay so so it does look like andreas you know um i think that this person maybe just sort of built up a certain game in their head that they wanted this to be 
and they're disappointed because it didn't meet their expectations, which is fine. But I feel like maybe they sort of, I mean, because when I, it's hard for me to explain. When I look at this game, I want, I really, only thing I care about is better melee combat because I like the first game a lot, but the lack of like really solid melee combat, it just really, you know, towards the later stages of the game, I was kind of like, ah, I really wish there was really good melee combat in this game. So I think, you know, the improved melee combat, the more diverse world, the more open world, the different locations you visit, that's really all you could have expected from this game. And maybe this individual just got their expectations too high, I guess. I don't know. I just thought it would be fun to look at these review scores because, like I said, everyone's talking about the game. I didn't get a game. So why don't I get a piece of the pie by reading other people's reviews and giving my thoughts on them? Of course, Dreamcast guy did manage to get an early copy of the game. So go check out his review of the game. I'm going to watch it now since I've already done this and check it out, see what he has to say. So go check him out. And yeah, thank you for checking out this video. If you are new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I think that Horizon uh, uh, Forbidden West is going to be a, a fine game. I think it's going to be one of the better games of the year. I think come, you know, game of the year discussions, it will definitely be in there. It seems like most people definitely enjoyed this game. Some people had some minor quips with it, but that's the beauty of reviews. You know, it's just one person's opinion. If someone goes against the grain, like that's fine as long as they sort of back it up. And I felt like this individual at Gamer.no did back it up. Just maybe they got their expectations out of line with this game in the first place which caused them to not really feel this game as much as other people are doing so let me know who you sort of side with on this and as always guys thank you for checking out this video if you are new to the channel be sure to hit that subscribe button like and share the video happy valentine's day i love you all and as always i'll catch you guys on the next video later